Hello StarCraft fans and welcome to day 4 of ASL Season 14. I am Nyokin joined by Scan, the Zerg and Terran group today, and let's get into our interviews. And hello once again, this is ASL Season 14 round of 24 Group D. And last week we have seen those three groups. Uh, a lot of strong players have made it into round of 16 like Royal, Barracks, uh, forgot who are the other players <laughs> can't really remember right now but we have some new face in this uh, round of 24 group D there's the one amateur player Dashik also using a, a different name Japnuda and there are three more Soki JYJ and Sok and how are you guys doing? so Soki the question was something about the ASL qualifier. Soki had some problem that his game didn't go well. So even if the game didn't go well, but he kind of felt like the condition of his condition was kind of excellent to keep up playing. He was kind of uh, he was kind of shocked that he got eliminated in the day one qualifier. But he made it through in the day 2 qualifier, so he kind of want to place this ASL tournament seriously and climb up higher. And what do you think about this ASL round of 24 group D? So Soki says, as long as he doesn't make any mistake of, the, uh, of his game, then he will be easily make it out of this group. He does have some pressure that uh, lots of audience are watching his game. So he would like to he would like to win. And this is a new player who made it into ASL season 14. Japnuda, aka Dashik. So a couple months ago he played the ACS uh, Africa Championship uh, Star League. The tournament that can be only played for a uh, amateur and semi-pro level, and he made it through. He won the champion uh, champion title there. And luckily, he survived in the ASL qualifier and he made it through in day two qualifier with the ACS champ. Uh, the feature that he has from the ACS champ. There's lots of uh, people know that you're really really strong in ZVZ and ZVP. What is your strongest part in ZVZ when you're playing against Soki? And Tashik says, or Nuda say, uh, he is not really that great in ZVZ. <laughs> so he's gonna pretend that he's not good at he's not playing uh, he's not good at playing ZVZ, but he will try to uh, beat Soki with Muda and Scourge combo attack. And we would like to talk with JYJ as well. How are you doing? So JYJ, you also had some uh, tough moment in the ASL qualifier. You you got eliminated in the day one. And you made it through in day 2 qualifier. So JYJ says he hasn't played much of a game recently, but he still has the confidence to beat these two play uh, players right next to him. Like uh, Dashik and Sak, who got eliminated in the uh, previous season easily. So JYJ says, whenever he plays on an online match against Sock, he usually loses against him. But every time whenever he plays all those important games against Sock, he always wins it. So he's gonna win again. And how are you doing Sock? Is there any different uh, feeling for you compared to the previous season? Uh, he doesn't have much of a different feeling, but he wants to show a different result in this ASL Season 14 round of 24. He also wants to say thanks to JSA members 
He recently joined JSA, and lots of JSA members are here on the studio to root for his game. So lots of people are expecting you to play uh, better this season. What is your percentage of making out of this group? 75% he says. So he did play it against all those uh, two, two players on this uh, online match like JYJ and Soki but he doesn't have much of a data against Tashik uh, however uh, he does have the confidence to beat him because he probably have less experience compared to the other ex-pros so it's a question to Sak. Uh, what do you think of the the mirror matchup, best of one series? Every time, whenever he played best of one uh, match, he does not feel comfortable. But he also learned the lesson from the previous season that he got eliminated to JYJ. He always played something uh, obvious, like the same pattern, like with his playstyle. So that can be the reason why he got eliminated. So he wants to play some mind game, I suppose. He suppose. So it's a question to Soki. You're in a group. Uh, you're in a group with uh, one of the amateur players. And what do you think? Do you have the pressure against uh, playing against the amateur player? And Soki says uh, he does have some pressure that he has to beat the amateur player who, or should say, the new face, the new ASL player in this ASL season 4 team. But uh, he doesn't really think about it much. He, he just wants to win. So, Nuda says he will absolutely, he must have, he must have to uh, beat Sock in either in a winner's matchup or loser's matchup. Uh, so, Sock says uh, when he was on a FA, FA. FA statement for the StarCraft uh, StarCraft University team. He was about to join Nuda's uh, team, MSG team. However, uh, Sak did not want to join. So, kind of feel bad for the MSG team. But, the tournament is tournament. He is going to beat uh, Nuda. So, question to JYJ. There's lots of uh, people who are joining the university team and pretty much grinding their time, spending their time and putting lots of effort teaching all those female streamers and what's more important for you? Uh, spending the time for the uh, university team or the individual tournament like ASL and Sock says, uh, JYJ says, it really depends how you put the balance of these uh, two, two of the university or the individual tournament. But since he's in the ASL tournament, he's going to be putting lots of uh, time and effort for the tournament, the uh, individual tournament. So he wants to win. Any... Is there any... Uh, Cheering message that you heard before you go into the game and he says if he makes out makes it out of this ASL group then Nuda will go go out on a date with uh, some Cute girls, I suppose he says <laughs> Any last word before we go into the game and JYJ says uh, he will put lots of uh, he did put he did put lots of effort for the tournament so he will made it out of this group He'll play his best and Sock says uh, since he has been getting eliminated from the previous se season like round of 24, round of 16 he wants to make it out of this group and he will try his best and Nuda there's lots of strong players right next to him 
He doesn't want to feel ashamed. When even if he gets uh, eliminated, he will try his best to make it out of this group as well. And thank you for the interview. So that was the uh, ASL pre-interview of these four players, and we're gonna be moving into the f the clean clean feed. And let me wind up the video. Okay, well, thank you for the translation scan. You know, when we were, when we got a shot of the players, I actually had to do a double take. I thought for sure that was ample. I mean, it really did look like ample from a distance. But it is nice to see a new player, new face, Dashik, going up against Solki. And you can see that I guess we're just going to go straight into game two or game one. It is Solki versus Dashik on Butter. So let's get into it. Okay, in the bottom right, in the red, it is Solki. And in the top right, in the blue, our new face, it is Dashik. Oh, I just felt something. We we just saw the new desk, uh, new desk cam from the cameraman. Yeah. He's wearing the ASL jacket. I have a feeling he's going to oh. win this game. <laughs> <laughs> I saw in the Team Liquid thread that they mentioned that you called it the power of the ASL jacket. Could be the case, man. You know, I was listening to the interview, I have to point out, Dashik was talking about how he was going to win with Muta and Scourge, and ZVZ is a lot about mind games. I wonder if he's actually going to do something completely different, like go for like a mass Lingolin. I mean, that is a viable strategy in ZVZ. Well, here's we are going to see whether who's going to be making the Overlord, and... Jam Nuda. He's going to be making the Overlord, but Soki isn't. So Soki will be going for the nine pole, and let's see how greedy knew that will go for. And that was what was that? That was a nine pole from Soki. So we've got an an aggressive opener from Soki, whereas Dashik still nothing down just yet. I'm always already thinking about the game between Queen. And Gamo, who had that 13 pool opener, which was interesting, but ended up getting caught a little bit too greedy. And that is going to be a 12 pool from Dashik. So this is going to be a really good opener for him. Some people may wonder about uh, Dashik's uh, the game ID, Jab Nuda. So Jab means fake in Korean, and Nuda, uh, probably written in a different way. But Nuda, the word is actually came from the Dragon Ball. The Kinyu Special Force, if you guys have watched the Dragon Ball Z <laughs> in the uh, Nam Namex uh, pla Planet, I forgot this, the name of it, but yeah, that was uh, that was uh, where, where the name came from. And we are going to see new that will go for the expansion. And the extractor did finish, she's putting the drones inside of the extractor, but will you be able to see those six things coming out? Yeah, thinking back to the game that we already saw on this map earlier, ZVZ. The, okay, Sulky's not worried about that Overlord getting there in time. And the Overlord does, I think, just barely miss it. So the Lings are moving across. And there's still no Lings out just yet for Japnuda. Okay, it is. They are complete now. But that layer timing is much, much faster for Sulky. Whereas Japnuda is not going for a layer. That is just instant speed for him. And we are seeing three drones with the six things that are going to fight, but that uh, one drone was kind of standing in the front. Needs to be careful here. And the one thing that we have, uh, I have to uh, explain. Uh, Jamnuda was at uh, Larva's house and get some training lesson from him, and hopefully he learned how to counter against this uh, nine polar opening. Because we know uh, Larva in the previous season, uh, like uh, one year ago or almost like 1.5 years ago, he showed such amazing ZBZ Larva against a hero in the past. And let's see how well he's going to be performing. He did help. Yeah, he did hold. Yeah, and he did hold and it was a very nice hold. He didn't overcommit with more than three drones, so he managed his eco well. You know, sometimes you can hold a hold an attack, but you over defend with scvs and you're actually behind or more drones in this scenario and you're actually behind so this was really good defense from dashik he does have i would say similar amount of links to sulky right now but that link count should swell and swell and we he may try and hit a timing right when the spire pops right when mutas or are morphing 
or maybe he'll just be content to sit outside the choke right here. Well, that is quite a lot of Zerglings uh, from the red collar. That is Soki. And one thing that we have to take a look at uh, New Dad's build because he did just get the third Overlord. But will he be making more uh, additional drone or will he be pumping for more Zergen for the timing attack? But I guess he won't be going for the timing attack. He's draining up. He does have started the lair attack. But where is the evolution chamber? Maybe. I mean, the spire attack is about to be finished, but that two Zergen was about to get him. But that uh, terrain, I should say, like the little tiny rock was blocking the path. He won't be able to get in. And now there will be the evolution chambers. We'll be starting now. And there's a Zergen fight in the middle of the map. Well, this is a really bad scenario for Dashik. He's got less links, I think, versus Solki's links. And remember, Dashik's on two hats. So I'm not sure how this happened. Evolution Chamber's about halfway done. There's no colonies in position for spores just yet. Mutas are out in the main, so these links will be dealt with. They even get, or okay, I thought they got one-shotted, but they were already damaged. They end up getting, that's the reason they get ended up one-shotted but overall Sulky's in a really good spot right now and that spore is not going to help him defend the mineral line so already Dashik's in really big trouble and actually he may die to just straight up links he's going for another counter attack but look how open his gnat is I mean he constantly throw his zergling away when Sulky is about to go for the giant uh, giant pressure but we are Seeing the Spore Colony is going up on time, but those six Zergling will go for the backstab, but there are four links for Soki, was about to hold, but there's a, a tiny trade here, but is this, was, was this, I don't think this is a good trade for Nida. Okay, Drone will get picked off, that's not good. Oh, yeah, definitely not a good trade for Dashik, and two Drones also go down, so... Tashik is in a really terrible spot right now. Mutas are keeping the Ling back. This one Ling, not going to get any damage done either. He's going to try and send out some more Ling, but this is five Mutas. They will one-shot all those Lings that come out. And behind this, Dashik's just trying to build up his drone count because he hasn't been able to actually get a drone lead versus Soki, who's even only on one hatch right now. And more drones are going to fall in the main. The spores are just not in position. Nice picking up those three drones. Uh, from Soki. Uh, Nuda constantly splits his Zergling to find a way to go for the harassment, but there are always Soki having a uh, six couple of links at the center and a couple of links at the expansion as well. So this is, I mean, Soki is just catching up with the economy. Yeah, Soki has definitely caught up in Econ, in my opinion. He's killed so many drones. He's got even hatcheries right now. He's got six mutas and he does Ooh. need to be oh he does lose a mutalist right there which at pro level losing a muta for two scourge is a bit of a, mis a mistake so he does need to be careful and these four scourge are actually going to push these four mutas back but in my opinion it just doesn't matter there's still a six supply lead which is huge in zvz muta advantage but we do have seven lings getting into the main this is the type of move, move dashik needs to get back into this game Picking up one drone and he's about to pick up the second drone. Will he be able to pick up the third drone? And yes, he will be. And the Overlord will get sniped by the Scourge. And I would like to see so uh New Dai is making getting the second guess. Okay, he's getting the second guess, but the thing we have to know is New Dai has been losing the drone, uh drone worth the worker count by Soki's Mira harassment. And here's going to be the giant counterattack from Soki with six muta and the zergling combo. Yeah, six mutas and a lot of links, and Dashik didn't seem like he had much links left over. Also, he has absolutely no mutas at all, and I don't think I've ever seen just mass scourge beat mutalis. So this is going to be a really tough hold for Dashik. Behind this, we see Sulky's got his gas running at his net. Also, of course, Dashik has it too. But the fact that Sulky's already up six or seven mutas means it's going to be basically impossible for Dashik to catch up in Muta Count. Unless he can actually land some Scourges, he's... That was a good cancel right there to save that Muta, but look at that. The Scourge just gets picked off. Well, never thought about canceling the egg. I mean, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you're playing Zerg, every single larva, like eggs are so important, but I guess in that kind of a game situation, you're, you're allowed to cancel the egg. It, if you think that uh, two Scourge is about to pick off the Muta, but okay, we are seeing uh, Nuda is also 
Uh, catching up with the worker count, and there's a, a couple of zerglings uh, sharking around at the natural. But the Mira is going to be. I think he wants to. Uh, Soki wants to uh, do the Mira harassment on the right side, uh, which is the main base of a uh, Nuda. And Zergling will go for the the frontal attack. So this is going to be the multi multitasking that he wants to he wants to force. Knew that to react. Okay, he do, he does react on time. That's good. Yeah, really good reaction right there. Surprisingly, Dashik has kept the supply, you know, relatively close, fifty to forty-two. He's actually built up a mute account, which I thought for sure Sulky was gonna outright kill him. But the game does go on. I wonder if anybody's getting armor. If somebody was, I would imagine Sulky's getting armor, and that may be what he's waiting before waiting for before he goes for the killing blow. It seems like he's got 13 mutas versus about 10 for Dashik, so a big muta advantage right now for Soul King. You can see it reflected in the supply. One thing that we can take a look of here is uh, Nuda is the one uh, is playing aggressive with the muta and Scourge here. Even if he does not have uh, that, that much of a high, the, the number of a muta count is not high because he is he's falling behind. I mean. Now look at the supply, I mean 50, 60 versus 52, he needs to try to force Soki to do the multi multitasking. Those four links wanted to go for the frontal attack like a harassment and pick up some drone but does not work out. And the Mira wanted to go in but does not work as well because the Obler is already having the detection or I should say the vision on the right side at the third expansion. Okay, one of the Mira somehow, uh, I guess Soki mis -rallied. Yeah, I'm not sure what happened there, but that was a good response from Solki to save the Muta, and also a good response from Dashik. He tried to get it, didn't end up getting it in the end, but nice attempt. And there we go. We've got a Queen's Nest coming down, and Queen's, well, Queen, or Hive Tech, I mean, whether it's Queen's or Devour or Plague, are game-changing in ZBZ. And plus one armor did kick in for Solki, so he does have the upgrade advantage. He does want to push a fight. But if he continues to just mass up Mutas and allow Dashik to buy time, if he can get out even two or three Devourers or Plague or Instare, like I said, I mean, those are game-changing in ZBZ. So I wonder if he'll actually make it to that tech. Well, yeah, we can see Nuda, Dumb Nuda is making more drone here, filling up more worker count, and the Scourge will search uh, there. But, oh, I guess the, the Spore was attacking the Mira and he was able to see the Queen's Nest was going up. Yeah, I can't believe he got vision of that. I thought for sure he was going to have no idea that Hive was on the way, but it is. And this is two groups of mutas comboed with a little bit of Scourge from Sulky. And we may have base trade scenario. Oh no, okay. Dashik sniffs something out and he's going to try and save the drones at the natural. But he ends up still losing two of them before getting any response. Is he going to try and intercept? This oh! Big mistake, but this might be the fight that he was looking for. That was a very good trade and we can see he's splitting up the Mira in half, uh, 5 Mira and 6 Mira. I guess he wants to go for the harassment here. And now Soki does react and he saw he missed he missed uh, catching he missed catching those uh, 5 Mira, uh, 11 Mira was coming out. And these 6 Mira will be picking a couple of drones at the natural and 5 Mira will be picking a couple more drones at the uh, the between of the main and the natural here. That's lots of, uh, lots of drones getting picked up. And we can see that natural 6 Mira will survive and these 5 Mira is picking up all those drones. I can't believe the entire drone line. Look at the look at the mini map skin. There's no drones mining. There's absolutely no drones. So he has no money. He has 91 minerals. That's well, it. I, think, I don't see the income. I think there's a one drone in the Vespin Geyser at the main base. We can see the Soki's gas is constantly going up. I guess he needs to pay attention. Yeah, there's a one drone should be mining the gas. We can see the uh, Vespin gas is still going up and we can see finally Nuda is going for the Greater Spire. Yeah, and this this Muta attack that killed the natural drones and the Oh my god. Drone, all of a sudden, if if Dasha can survive here, he will win. I don't think four spores beats 20 mutas though. Scourge are gonna connect though, and actually there's a lot of mutas left over for Dasha. How did this happen? Oh my god. I guess the power of uh, the coaching lesson from Larva <laughs> is actually helping him out to survive, but let's let's see whether the spore will survive. I wanna see the muta count. 
I want to see the meter count. Please select the meter count. But the, the meter count is just way too much for Yuna to hold. He's going to end up losing all of his drones and the hatchery. Uh, the supplies are still in favor of Sulky. He just doesn't have any money, though. He can't attack into four spores and a decent amount of mutas either. So he's going to have to back off for now. And actually, Dashik is going for another counterattack. He's everywhere. He's into the main, but there's no drones there. So that's going to be a waste of time for him. And actually, this may be a misstep here. He's very committed with just seven mutas. Okay, he has no way of escaping. I don't think he has any way to save these mutas. Oh, that was really good split. I can't believe it. Wow. He is just playing the ZVZ like Larva. I mean constantly splitting up his muta and go for the harassment and now he's about to restore those, those uh spore colony at the natural and Soki does catch the uh the intention of nida here and he's about to finish one of the spore but the other three uh the second and the third spore colony won't be finishing on time so that's not going to be looking great he just didn't have the money to get all the colonies up and running, but he still had the hatchery. I was watching, I was like, wait a minute, Sulky didn't kill that base? And the answer is no, he didn't. And now Sulky has stabilized his drone count in this miracle comeback from Dashik. Looks like it's going to be denied. Also, I got to point out, Sulky has plus two armor right now, mm -hmm. which I'm not, I'm not sure how that comes into play versus Devourers because we don't see that often. But he still has like 20 mutas, and I don't think any amount of Devourers are going to beat 20 mutas when you only have, you know, seven mutas on you for yourself. Yeah, I think so. I think Nuda knows he lost this game. He's just gonna be wasting his muta and picking up the drone, and then probably taps out soon here. Yeah, there, there you go. Nuda taps out. Soki will be winning this game number one. I'm on butter. Wow, what an insane game! I thought there was no way for Soki to lose, and then he almost did. Dasha is smiling right there. He knows he almost stole a victory. That was impressive uh, game sense to go for a backstab like that. Incredible, in incredible mind game of how he was able to read up and uh, ha finding a solution to finding a solution to uh, flip the table around. But it was a nice try. Soki was definitely a strong play. He made it. Uh, he made it into round up eight in the previous season, so he's definitely a strong player. Even though lots of people say Soki's not good at ZVZ, but he does have lots of experience compared to Tashi or Nida. Yeah, and also since this is an in-person event, you know, it's not offline where there's no, or not online where there's no pressure. You know, you know, Dashik, he's definitely feeling nervous. This is his first time on the big stage, but that was really, really nice play from him. And if there's a rematch between these two players, Sulky needs to be on his guard. It's not over till it's over. And I think Sulky realizes that he's going to have to be very careful next time if they end up playing. But up next, it's going to be Terran versus Terran. It's going to be JYJ versus Sock. But we're going to be going into a break first, and then we'll be back with that game.
Welcome back. We're about to get into... Oh, I think we have Ask ASL right now. Mm-hmm. And let's hear what she says. So that was the game number one of ASL Season 14 round opening for Group D. And we have seen Soki was playing uh, such a huge lead in the early stage of the game, but uh, Nida, aka Dashik, he was playing such a great game, uh, such a nice uh, game sense and tried to make some comeback. Flipped the table around, but did not work out so well. But we are here with the uh, ASL, ASL event. Ask ASL, go to ASL mainstream platform, leave a comment to the players that you would like to ask a question. And if your comment can select it, you get the ASL mini, mini fan. And there's also the winner's prediction event. And there's a... If you go to the Africa, Africa, Africa esports, esports uh, prediction page, and there's a lot of gems that you can uh, throw for the prediction. And if your prediction gets uh, right, then you get more gems, and you can exchange those gems with something like a coffee, graphics card, or something else. And let's take a look at JYJ's stats here. You're getting a look at JYJ stats. You can see pretty darn good, 50% for Terran or for TVT, TVZ, but a little bit lacking in TVP, which is a little surprising because I remember JYJ took out Bisu a few seasons ago, and lately he's done very well versus Protoss in particular. The past two seasons, I think, or three seasons, he's made it into like the round of eight. So JYJ is definitely a contender in ASL. Meanwhile, on the other side, Sock. I don't think Sock generally does as well as he hopes in ASL, but this guy, Terran versus Terran, he's really really good at it and both of the players have a similar tvt tvt asl record jyj have 50 percent and sock did play one more game so the game is going to be a, a total odd number five wins and six losses 45 percent pretty much even uh looking but we know uh, we know JYJ beat Sock in the previous season with the 14 CC opening, and Sock was playing something in standard, but he absolutely got uh, destroyed in that game in an Eclipse on a two-player map. And this is also another uh, two-player map uh, for the the new season of this ASL the Butter, and I would like to see how Sock is going to be played. And of course, Sock does have lots of experience of TVT. He did win the very old tournament, Bant, was it a, no, it was, no, that was a Sven Star League, uh, SSL Sven Star League, he did win that one of the tournament in the previous season, and let's see how well he has come back, how well he's going to be performing today. Well, our players are ready, let's get into game two of JYJ versus Sock, again, it's going to be on Butter. In the bottom right, in the red, it is JYJ. And in the top right, in the blue, it is Sock. And I was thinking about some TVTs of recent memory. Didn't we have some insane game on Eclipse last season between Barracks and Sock? Mm, I don't actually remember. Oh, it looks like lots of uh, people are here to root for, root for, uh, root for the players here. And some JYJ fans. Well, I do remember last season or a season before that there was a crazy game. W definitely Barracks was in it. I can't remember if it was actually Sock. I, I feel like it was Sock though. So if you are looking for an insane TVT, definitely check out T uh, TVT on Eclipse mm -hmm. with Barracks plus an unknown player or. A player that I can't remember right now and we've got an interesting move from both players that's a regular depot timing but what are these SCVs doing well I guess both of us here wants to put the barracks uh, forward they both have a similar similar thought and both of the uh, both of the players will be <laughs> meeting at the center of the map okay hey I saw your SCV yeah I see you too and now they have to decide whether they want they want to put the barracks at the main or do you or one of the players is going to be more greedy and choose to go for okay 12 barracks here 
Yeah, it is gonna be a slightly later barracks timing for Sock. Not a huge deal, but in this area where you know optimizing your minerals and gas income is super important, this could give Sock a slightly faster command center if he opts to go for that. Now, the SCV doesn't see the rack, so he may be worried that actually the SCV is building the rack somewhere out on the map. We know that that's not the case. And you can see that that he actually JYJ has an additional SCV scouting. That's a big deal he, because Sock does not. That's just one more SCV not mining for J, or JYJ. And that's an interesting gas timing scan. That's a 15 gas. Yeah, so he since he has missed those uh, where the barracks was located at, so he decided to go for... Uh, instead of going for the Rex expansion, he wants to go for gas expansion, which is which helps him to get slightly faster factory to hold up any sort of like a two factory all in or yeah, any any sort of uh, all in build from Sock, and he will be playing safe since he has figured out where the barracks was was located. But JYG is not paying attention of his CV. SCV goes down. That's a big loss for him he has no intel now and sock could have put three back onto gas and gone for a push if he wanted to but we know that that's not the case he is just going to build a command center behind this just a single marine too uh, but this factory is considerably farther ahead than jyj's but the command center is noticeably ahead for jyj jyj is about to put down the factory but i kind of find um I don't find JYG's having a, such a lead in this game because he has gone for the gas expansion than the command center compared to the Sox uh, natural command center. There's not too much of a difference from what I'm seeing, but the factory the, uh, the factory timing is a huge difference as well from what I'm seeing here. Yeah, and I wonder how many vultures Sock will end up building. I imagine just one, and that is going to be the case. He's going to go straight add-on. And Sock is a player I know for sure will play Wraiths. So we'll see if he's going to do that. It looks like SCV's in position to build a second factory though. Oh, maybe not. Has he changed his mind? So it is just one factory right now. So before I left JSA, I was talking with Sock of uh, TVT and he told me uh, he told me lots of uh, interesting thing of uh, TVT that he said that in, uh, the vul Vulture Tank Wraith combination is much better than a Goliath raid and uh, a Goliath Goliath Seas tank because of the early stage of the game you can have such a nice harassment and pretty much having a nice Seas tank line at the center of the map as well because you force the enemy to make a couple of uh, Goliaths in early stage of the game and forcing not to have that much of Seas tank and we see Sok I don't. I guess he's not interested of going for the starport opening this game, but we see JYJ will put down the third factory, and he will be counting. Okay, there's a second factory, so there there must be somewhere, the first factory somewhere. Yeah, he ends up missing the first one, but I'm sure he knows that he definitely has three facts, and Sock's gonna respond with three factories uh, for himself. And speed, I think, has kicked in for Sock right now. I was curious what the upgrade was going to be. And it... Oh, he got mines first, actually. I thought he was going to get mines. I like this play, even though they don't connect on the vultures, obviously. It's going to give you vision. You're going to know when the vultures move out. And get into uh, a defensive posture uh, if you need to. If I'm in a position like this of a... Uh, uh, JYJ, I... Once he figures out, once he figures out this is a vulture war, he will be immediately putting down. I mean, if I were him, I would immediately putting down a three factory vulture into starport follow up and skipping the armory. But I guess he's somewhat, definitely scared of uh, the wraith will be coming, so he does have the armory going up. But suck, he knows what exactly JYJ is doing with the three factory vulture build. So he will be skipping skipping the armory and go for the three factory starport build. Oh, and look at this! JYJ pokes out, sees that the vultures are out of position, so he tries to go for a backstab. But those mines give Sock vision, so Sock scrambles to get back in time. We know that the counter attack ended up not happening, but it was a good response from Sock to get back there. Starport is done. 
We're gonna have some Wraith coming in pretty soon. There's the Academy. Of course, Sock doesn't know if this is a Wraith follow-up either. I don't think he saw the Armory. But he's gonna come back in, and now he's gonna confirm that this is Vulture Goliath. Okay, there's a Goliath just now came out from JYZ. He didn't make two, two Goliaths to pick off the barracks. Okay, that barracks will, um, unfortunately, it will get destroyed. And we see... Oh! I guess Sock was making the Wraith, but he decided to cancel because the two Goliaths were already out on the map. So, if he's adding... If he's adding the add-on to the starboard, then that is the meaning of uh, Sock will go for the Vulture drop later on. But the Vulture trade is happening at the map, but the JYJ is losing so much of a Vulture now, this is not going to be looking great for him because he... I don't... I don't think he did spend much of a vulture for the spider mine on the minimap. Uh, spider mines on the minimap. So, yeah, now Sock is just gonna be catching all those vulture. I mean, he knows where the vultures are. Yeah, and just looking at the amount of spider mines that JYJ put down, he definitely didn't use them all. And look at that, JYJ didn't oh know that God. mines were already set up, so he already loses or, or already runs into a couple of them. Goliath almost dies, Tank almost dies, and that keeps. JYJ back and that means Sock's gonna feel confident to expand to a third base up there and also go for a drop at the same time. I'm not sure if the drop's already loaded up or if he's going to load some of those vultures in there but the tanks and Goliaths are out of position and that means that that's a completely open main and I see that a cycle of units just got pumped out of the factories too so there's not gonna be any units popping out anytime soon. Quite interesting to see uh, Sock is not uh, sending a dropship yet until he knows JYJ is moving out. Uh, JYJ is moving out, so uh, interesting part of the dropship play, the dropship movement. But there's a two random SCVs gets picked off, and that third expansion will get delayed. So now Sock needs to pay attention. Four vulture drop will be going inside of a JYJ's main base, and picking a one, two, three, four. Okay, there's more than five for sure and now he's gonna be loading up those vulture and run away soon oh my gosh he does so much damage not only getting the scds mining minerals but also getting two scds building depots this is so annoying luckily jyj is not supply block just yet but that was a big win for sock and now He's going to start moving across the map, trying to get into position, kind of like what Royal did versus Sharp. You know, Royal was in complete map control position for almost the entirety of the game. And Sock is trying to do the same thing. He's got a single Wraith to spot, too. That's a random Wraith, but now it will be running away. I guess that Wraith was here to, uh, was here to pick off the barracks. I mean, yeah, there must be the barracks uh, standing at the middle of the map, but the two Vultures are still doing some work. Denying that third expansion still, and JYJ, uh, he's having such a big pressure. I mean, the sea tank pressure at the front line. I mean, it's also high ground that JYJ uh, suck has taken, and JYJ needs to shift his all of his army to the left side of the map, and he needs to take over the high ground somehow. I didn't know that JYJ was building a third command center at his natural, so he's got his third base up and running basically at the same time. He's, his supply is basically even too, it's one tw uh, 104 to 112, so almost identical. But Sock has the map position advantage. We've got four tanks on the high ground versus just four on the low ground. Can JYJ take this out? He's got more vultures right now, but none of the mines have connected. And look at the focus fire from Ooh. both sides. The mine connects and he does kill all four tanks. That was a great trade for JYJ, but he may lose all four tanks in the process too to this raid. Yeah, that single raid is just doing such a big work. I mean, yeah, this is the type of thing that Sak told me. He told me Raid tank vultures are so much better than Goliath, uh, Goliath tank. Oh, no. Of course, I, I, I didn't know about the fact, but he's showing, uh, he's showing how it's supposed to be played. And now we can see Sock is absolutely having a, such a lead with the supply count, and those two vultures are about to pick up some vulture, but uh, SCV, but then he decided not to. And those tanks, four tanks were coming down and about to contain those four tanks that JYJ sent his. Uh, army to the third expansion 
Zoc is just so good with positioning his units. This is exactly what you should be doing oh my in Terran God. versus Terran, is you make a move like that with the Vultures, move units out of position, and then instantly reposition your own. That's the hallmark of a great TVT player. I mean, so easily when I think of Sock, best matchup, it's gotta be TVT, and you're seeing it right here. This is exactly what you should be doing. He's got six factories, he's got three add-ons. Oh, the mines! Oh. The mine constantly connects, and there's also counter right from uh, JYJ. But gotta be careful. Uh, the growth okay, current booster does finish for JYJ. So JYJ is constantly uh, he's just throwing his army away, and now he's constantly getting uh, the contain from the center of the center center of the map. And now we can see more factors being added from Sock. And I'm not sure whether that's the still plus one upgrade or plus two upgrade for our, for Sock. Oh, that must be the plus two upgrade that right now Sock is making. So that's a huge lead for Sock here. Map control, all those army taking all uh, taking all those high ground. Yeah, and what I'm looking at here is fourth base done for Sock. Meanwhile, those tanks on the left side could just shell down the fourth base of JYJ. So that will be a denied base, and it forces JYJ to take mid right. And if mid left gets denied, you know, JYJ will just be stuck on four bases for the entire game. There's no other base for him to take except for, I guess, this base and maybe mid right. But that, that will definitely be a contested base. We see Sok is continuing to reinforce the left side. And actually, there's almost no defense for JYJ here. So this could be a busted third. And yeah, now Sok is about to scan and figure out how much of all these things over there. And now... Sock is coming down with a couple of Seas tank, picking up all those JYJ Seas tank, and that fourth base that JYJ wants to take is going to be vulnerable. Okay, picks off that SCV before the command center finishes on time. Yeah, that, that's painful. That's going to be a cancel. He will at least get the 300 minerals back, and Sock realizes that, hey, probably the only way for this guy to get back in the game is maybe he wins the air battle. So already he's building... Valkyries in anticipation of that. JYJ will get his fourth base up at mid right, but this is just complete map control of Sock. I mean, straight through the left side in the center, he has all of it, and that gives him access to five, six, seven bases if he can get mid right and mid left. Oh. Yeah, I guess the JYJ having uh, such a bad, uh, bad game of today because, I mean, He's just constantly stepping on those spider mines of a uh, sock spider mines, and now I guess JYJ wants to do something up here, and he's gonna be sieging on a uh, two C tanks on a low ground and a couple of C tanks on a high ground. But okay, but the number of C tanks is just way too much for sock, and we can see sock now finishes the plus two attack, but JYJ does not have the plus two attack, and okay, that JYJ needs to cancel those uh, third three o'clock the expansion over there. And what happened to JYJ? I don't see his... I don't see his, uh... I feel like he's falling behind in this uh, late game here. Maybe he has been sick for a while. Alright, well we're gonna have an attempted attack through the center. The vultures draw some of the shots, but Sok is gonna refocus fire some of the tanks. No, actually he didn't. I don't know if he even killed a single tank there. You can see that Sok does have the critical plus two weapon, and JYJ finally gets a victory in the center of the map but I mean still look at how much blue is all over the center and the left and the right and you know this is TVT the the opposing player doesn't really have to attack they can just sit there and eat up oh, all the bases oh, oh no lose four tanks for free oh JYJ he, he just kind of uh, he's just kind of know that he was not paying attention of those four seas tank and now he knows he has to give away that high ground and this is a vulture tank a vulture tank war in the middle of the map and now all those JYJ tanks are gone and JYJ is having floated mineral he just can't uh, fight back here I mean he needs to he needs to macro here oh Wraith and Valkyrie slightly out of position not able to catch the dropships but really what could possibly be in the dropships that could salvage this game I don't think really he can. Tanks are on his doorstep right now. Nat has been breached. And with the Nat being breached, 
That means there's going to be no way to defend these open third and fourth bases. The drop seems like it's doing decent damage to mid left, but I don't think it matters. Sox continuing to reinforce his nat the natural position and well, no, he's not actually. These are okay. That's that's a lot of tanks. That's still five tanks to defend. JYJ is uh, stuck on a four base mining, and he has done lots of harassment at the eleven o'clock expansion. But those two drops uh, will eventually get picked up because of Wraith and Valkyrie that right now Sock is making. Okay, their vultures are about to put some spider mines, and those Goliath Seas tank cannot run away. All those army will get cleared up. And how is he? How is JYJ gonna be breaking the frontal line? Yeah, he's gonna try with some SCB bombing, which does work versus tanks, but I don't know if it's gonna work at this point in the game. And it doesn't. GG comes out, and Sock, he dominated JYJ on butter. Wow. I mean, I guess he showed uh, how strong his uh, his TVT is in this uh, ASL season 14 compared to the previous season. And we can see those uh, JS JSA members. I was also in the JSA uh, <laughs> two weeks ago. I recently left, but they're all here at the studio rooting for Suck, and they're all happy how Suck is winning the game. And I think we're gonna be going to the Hot Six commercial soon. Yeah, I think that always comes up after game two. But that was really impressive play from Suck. You know, if you're a Terran player out there looking. For a Terran versus Terran specialist, in my opinion, definitely look at Sock. I remember watching someone stream, I was whether it was Rush or Light, I can't remember exactly, and they were playing, and I was just watching them face off versus this guy. It was unknown to me at the time, and I was just like, damn, the opponent's playing amazing, like actually perfect. And then I found out it was Sock, I was like, oh, okay. That makes sense. I mean, this guy's just so good, TVT, and you saw it right there. I mean, there was no point in that game where JYJ had a chance. From the get-go, you know, with the barracks timing to the factory timing, command center timing, there was no point where JYJ had a command of that game. Yeah, the coming up game will be the Soki versus Sop, and we are going to be going to the Hot 6 commercial, I believe, and there it is. Yeah, there we go. Now... Talk to me a little bit about ZVT. We know Sulky doesn't like ZVZ, and I know that Sock is a Terran versus Terran specialist. But how do these two? How do these two face off versus face versus each other in a Zerg versus Terran? Well, Sock is one of the player who does not play super standard in TVZ. I mean, if we think of like the old games of uh, TVZ. I'm pretty sure he was the one player who tried to popularize the 111 in a different way compared to the modern 111, that how Flash remade the 111 style. So, uh, of course, Sock, uh, he, he's kind of played a little bit off from compared to the standard playstyle, like how Rush plays a solid uh, standard playstyle, like a 2 Rex Academy or sometimes an eBay first build. But Sock... He does have lots of uh, bag, uh, what is it, bag of build or bag of strategy. So I would like to see something like uh, something cool build from him. Yeah, I was thinking also about the one one one. I feel like I remember a comment where Flash said he liked Sox one one one, but he felt like the there was too much SCV cutting, and you know Flash is the king of optimizing macro. But we could see a 1-1 opener, or 1-1-1 opener, I mean, from Sock versus Sulky. I would like to see it. I'm trying to think of w maps that you can actually wall on that we have on the map pool. Because if you can wall and go 1-1-1, all of a sudden you don't even have to worry about 2-hatch mass laying. So I'm thinking, you know, Nemesis, possibly. That could be a map. Hmm. I think you can wall there. Yeah, no. oh, oh, also, we have Odyssey. We have Odyssey, too. What about Odyssey for TVZ? You would have double gas in your main. Well, we have seen... Well, I played Odyssey before. Uh, the Odyssey map is somewhat difficult compared to the Eclipse map. Like, how those missile threat They can't really defend the middle, middle harassment at the natural. So, maybe it could be the possibility that Suck might go for one one Like, how... Royal was playing one moment. Oh, I guess that they're done with the Hot Six commercial. We'll be coming back after this uh, commercial break.
We are back. We got a highlight of one of Caster Park's favorite games, which was Last vs. Rain. And look at that map band scan. Odyssey for both players. And we're going to see for the first time all season Arkanoid in a TVZ. Well, I guess we are going to be taking a look at this uh, the map explanation. Mia Arkanoid. And the main base has 10 mineral fill with the one Vespin Geyser. The map. Uh, the other side of the expansion, I should say, the natural expansion has six mineral fields with the one Vespin geyser each side. And the thing is, there's lots of uh, neutral building at the center of the map, and you have to destroy them in order to attack your enemy's uh, base. And you can see those uh, red circle and drawing the line of the center of the map, like how you're supposed to be approaching. Yeah, this this is a really really weird map. Terran's gonna have no way of scouting unless they're gonna float a Rax and then he's gonna have to guess one of the three positions of Sulky. Now meanwhile Sulky of course can scout with the Overlord but uh, he's still gonna be kind of in the dark. I'm not sure how he'll be able to poke in and see what the actual tech is and you know Sock is one of the players that will play 1-1-1 as we mentioned so Sulky's gonna have to rep prepare for Wraith, potentially Valkyrie play, but I think Sock could use that to his advantage and maybe just instantly go into just heavy mech play and just skip Wraith in particular. Hmm. Well, there's also a different, different version of a 111, which is like a 112 with the two starport build. I mean, factory expansion, in, factory expansion into two starport build, how... Royal often does it in TVZ, and that can be the one of the case how you're, you can be making some comeback for Sock, like not taking much of a Mira harassment in early stage of game, and also smoothly switching over to Biotech and making double sense fest at a time. And we are going to the game momentarily. Looks like players are ready, wearing their earphones, and okay, yeah, both of the players are wearing the jacket. I guess they have a feeling that they have to wear the jacket in order to make him to round the 16. So. <laughs> Not sure who's going to be winning, but they're both wearing it. I would love to hear that in the interview. What, what gave you the power to win? And they both say the ASL jacket. That would be hilarious. But players are ready. Let's get into our winner's match. It is Sulky versus Sock, and it is going to be on Arkanoid. In the blue in the top right, it is Sulky. And in the top left are Red Terran. It is Sock. Now I have not played this map very many times scan, but the few times I have played versus uh, played on it, Terran versus Zerg, I can tell you the build I hate the most. It's the super fast one hatch muta. You miss your eBay timing and all of a sudden you just can't you just can't stop even like four mutas. It's crazy how strong that build is. Do you think we could see that possibly from Sulky? Mm, I think... Uh, like no. No, I mean, I, you might be right, but I mean, because of, uh, in order to take the expansion on the side, you have to kill those, uh, the, the tiny, four of the, four of the, the building that is blocking the pad. So I, I, I'm gonna be guessing Soki might gonna go for maybe over pro or even a 9 pole. I guess he will be going for the 9 pole. Let's see what he has to pair of this game. Yeah, the, one of the, well, one of the many intricacies of Arkanoid is you do have four larva blocking both of your expansions. So it does take a while to knock them down. But if you can get, or when you get them, they both have gas. So Soki will have three gases available also three base income available to him. Now Sock, he's gonna go for, I think Rax Command Center, yep, there's the Rax. And it is positioned close to the larva where he can knock down those larva and try and put down the Command Center quite quickly. And there's Nara and the JSA, the chairman here. They're both are here rooting for Sock. And I don't see Sock is making the refinery, but we are seeing Soki is about to mine the extractor. The overlord and sound comes out. Four links and one supposed to be. It is supposed to be a four link and a f one drone because I heard four links are more than enough to take down those uh, the neutral building at the expansion. 
And Soki, of course he won't be getting the meta Barbie boost here. I mean, there's no way of getting into Sock's main base. He does spend 100 Vespin Gas. Yep, and there are those, I guess, cocoons that I was oh, talking sixling. about. Whoa, okay, he's actually going to knock down temples instead of knocking down the the cocoon. So this is going to be the fast one hatch. Maybe Mutas? Actually, this could also be Lurkers because Lurkers can shred through buildings. Okay, that's well, interesting. Yeah, I was not expecting this. I thought for sure that those links were going to be built to try and take down the cocoons. And I am paying very close attention to Soul Key's main. There is no Hydrogen, so this is going to be... Oh, there it is. Okay, it is going to be Lurker. So it is going to be one hatch Ling Lurker. And Soul Key's already identified the position of Sock. So he knows exactly what generators to knock down. Yeah, he is making all the, the path to the to the left side, and we are seeing Sock is about to take an expansion using two Marine and a single SAV to kill those neutral building. There are ten links and maybe twelve links maximum, and now we can see Sock. Can he see it? No, I don't see the player camp. Okay, now he sees it. He sees the Templar, a Prada's temple is getting destroyed slowly and now he needs to bring all of his marine and he's about to make a bunker but the metabolic boost is already done. I mean the temple look, is look, going down super duper fast. Yeah look at the size of the temples like actually the marines can't attack. They can't attack and links just run in and oh this bunker might not be completing either. That's really good control of the marines but they die just slightly too fast. The bunker does not get any of them loaded up and links are in the main. This is just one racks. There's no two. There's no second racks. There's no factory. There's no anything. Half of the SCVs are already been killed. We may not even get into lurkers. Yeah, the bunker will go down. One of the marine is trying to survive, but it's not going to be working out so well. One group of links is just too much for Sock to hold up. I, I guess the uh, Sock was misread the intention of the mind game of here. That uh, he probably was expecting Sock. Uh, Soki will be playing. The Mira build, but he decided to go for the one hatch lair into Lurker build, and now there's just so many uh, locations to defend, and another Marine gets picked off. Okay, there's a GG. Wow, that was a really killer move from Solki. One hatch lair into Lurkers, and it completely caught off, uh, caught Sock off guard. I mean, we didn't even get to see the Lurkers, but the Mass Lings ended up just doing the killing move and that means sulky is going to move on into the next round with a very very convincing win on Ar arkanoid and i also noticed um <laughs> sulky was wearing the ASO jacket until the game was finished and sock <laughs> was not wearing it maybe that can be the one of the case i mean he was he was having that uh, ASO jacket on his uh, shirt uh, on his uh, body or uh, before we go into the game but i guess he took it off while he was playing so maybe there was a <laughs> bad luck of uh, not wearing the ASL jacket, I suppose. But we are going to be going into the interview here. And this is ASL Season 14, Round of 24 Group D. The first player who is going to be advancing into Round of 16, that will be Soki. Congratulations! And after the game was finished, you, you, you disable all those equipment and put it into your back and now you're wearing the back uh, as well and here for the interview. And how do you feel? So Soki says he was looking forward to finish the game super, uh, super fast and that DBZ uh, they, they didn't, uh, they didn't go for the short game, but the uh, plan didn't work out for well for him. He wanted to play a short game. So, was there any feeling that you might gonna lose the game in the game number one against Tashik, uh, Nida? And he wasn't expecting uh, uh, Nida would be rotating or splitting off his Mira and harass his main base and Anatra at the same time, so he was kind of shocked about that a moment. And he decided to go for the he decided to go for the all in move with the two groups of Mira and busting the Natra and then work out the well for him. So it was, it was very lucky for him. And 
And what made you to play one hatch flare attack build in game number uh, three on winner's match? And he says this build was uh, this build was given by uh, Miso and Miso gave Miso gave, gave Soki some advice of this one hatch flare into a Hydra lurker build, and it did work out well for him. And he kind of wants to appreciate to him. And the recently. Yesterday, NSU lost to Tsuna University of a university tournament. And what is your statement? Are you going to be staying in NSU or are you going to be leaving? And Soki says he wants to. He still wants to stay in NSU even though the team lost. And what would you like to show in ASO round of 16? And so he says, if he has too much of a thinking or too much thought in his mind, then he does have the pressure and not going to be playing well. So he decided not to practice that much of a game. And he did, he did some of a image training. And because of that, he does have less pressure and not much, not much of a thing, uh, thought to have in his side of my, in his inside of his mind. So it did help him out so well for the round of 24. And thank you for the interview. Yep, well, we're going to be going into a break in just a moment, and then we'll come back with our losers match, which is going to be JYJ versus Dashik. Surprising to see JYJ already in the losers bracket because he's done so well in past seasons, but maybe Dashik can take him out. Then we could potentially see Dashik versus Sock in the finals match, so don't go anywhere.
it is time to get back into our fourth game of the day. We can see this time around, Arkanoid got banned twice, and that means that our map is going to be Allegro. Hmm, interesting uh, map ban from uh, Jamnida because I mean, new Arkanoid, I I, I find uh, Zerg is somewhat doable. I mean, you can still do like a somewhat interesting game with the Mira build or. You can do the all-in lurker build like how Soki was doing in that game, but I guess he does not like to play a uh, strategy mind game. I suppose he wants to play somewhat a standard map. So I guess the uh, Allegro, he did practice lots of game with me a couple days ago and even yesterday before he went to he goes for the bed, and I would like to see him. Uh, I wanted. I want him to like perform such, such a late game. I want to see his late game potential of, against uh, JYJ because he has been getting lots of train from Larva and we know Larva is such an amazing player who is really really good at late game potential and I guess players are ready and we're going to go into the losers match of this JYJ versus Jamnida on uh, Allegro. So in the top left position, our Terran, it is JYJ, in the bottom right in the green, it's our Zerg, Joplida, and hearing you say that Larva was giving him coaching really makes me hope that we do get late game, because as you stated, Larva is just the king of macro, not just in Zerg versus Protoss, but once he gets his eco really going in Zerg versus Terran, I mean this guy just has so many unit so I hope we don't see some type of all in two hatch or all in like three hatch low eco mass me to play but JYJ is no slouch in TVZ either and what I like about JYJ is he's a well-rounded player he can play Wraith he can play Marine Medic he can also play Goliath opener which we know players like Barracks like uh, like to play so hopefully we can see uh, some type of unorthodox play from JYJ so JYJ is making a supply depot at the main and Jamnida is making the over alert. Most likely he will be going for the 12 hatch reveal. I mean, lots of player, they are not afraid of Arax anymore. I mean, they go for the 12 hatch and they think, oh yeah, I can still hold up the Arax cheese. I mean, yeah, drones are just a very powerful unit. And we can see that is the girl, uh, JYJ's girlfriend. JYJ's girlfriend, uh, is, she is here to root for her boyfriend here. Boyfriend is on a... Big time trouble here. He's playing a losers match. If he gets eliminated, he is done with the ASL journey. Yeah, and I was curious to see if JYJ was actually going to go for working command center like Barracks did, but not going to be the case. It is going to just be a normal Rax expand. He is going to send his SCV out, and he is going to go to top right and may see the Overlord and figure out that, hey, Jopnida is bottom right, but, you know, Jopnida obviously. He's a smart player, may be able to hide it sitting over the right over over the high ground and not give away any intel. Now this is going to be the standard opener from Zerg. Very fast gas after the hatch. Adrian will be scouting all the way across the map. Okay, he does see the SCPOs coming out from 1 o'clock, so he's gonna be directly changing the drone scout pattern all the way to 11 o'clock. And we can see Chamnida is making more drone here, 12 drone total and that's the second SCV just now came out from from JYJ I guess he wants to see whether the drone was coming or what not a nice that SCV good, drilling yeah good block on the SCV to deny vision a little bit but drop new dot comes in here and sees there's nothing unusual going on more than likely the command center will go up but I guess technically he didn't confirm it so it still could be a gas behind it but you know that's a uncommon thing these days so Probably just expecting it to be a normal command center. And meanwhile, Lair coming down. And of course, JYJ spots it. Yeah, there's uh, still no Zergling being made from Jamnida. Uh, his drone is coming, but we see two Marines are moving out of the map. I guess he's trying to look for the Overlord. Okay, there are two links just now popped out from the egg. Now needs to chase that scouting SCB. Yep, yeah, a couple two hits. more links from the 
two more lanes from the natural gonna intercept the the scv knocks it down considerably and it is going to push the scv out so if he holds positions on the ramp now potentially he could get sneaky and put down something like a hydrogen overlord pathing uh, you can tell that he's been intercepted a couple times because that is Ooh. a unique path and all the way to the top side and the SCV does fall down. Now that is a fast eBay follow-up also comboed with a very fast Academy, like a 330 Academy. So JYJ really lacking in terms of units, but he is going to have very fast upgrades. And now the Spire Tech now goes up, goes up and we see JYJ is cutting the gas in, uh, with Cutting the gas at mining the gas with the two, two SCV and that SCV, the scouting SCV, clicked the mineral field and went through the Zergling and now he's going to be able to read off what uh, Jabnida is doing. There's a spark tech was going up then that's going to be giving, uh, that gave JYJ all the intel whether he needs to get the comp sensation or whatnot. But that two Zergling, I mean JYJ totally missed, uh, missed that uh, minimap. And now those two Zergling will be confirming everything. There's the eBay was uh, blinking and the SCV is getting picked up. Wow. Yeah, and those two Lings, even though they don't get any Marine kills, getting one SCV kill is great since he's killed now two SCVs that were scouting. And he also sees that, hey, this guy has absolutely no barracks. And if you've got no barracks, well, guess what? You can't pressure me. So he's going to put down a third base at top right. And it's going to be really hard for JYJ to do anything about it. Yes, yeah, Spartak is about to be finished and we see JYJ still not adding the compensation, but he's still lacking with the, uh, the barracks count. I mean, you're supposed to be having 4 racks maximum when, uh, yeah, 4 racks before the Mira pops out. And yeah, now he's adding it. But we can see JYJ still making more of a worker count. Still no compensation, being very greedy because he read off what Japanese that was doing, he does not have the Hydra then whatsoever. And still no compensation. Okay, there's a finally the compensation being added. No missile trade yet. Yeah, now top right, I'm not the biggest fan, or top left, I mean, I'm not the biggest fan of building turrets there. It's so hard to deal with mutas, especially when you have your gas and your refinery there on the right side also. We'll see if Japanese wants to exploit the top left position, but for now, he seems like he's heading towards the main, and there's no turrets up just yet. Yeah, no turrets, but... I mean, if he just directly goes into the barracks side, I mean, that single SAV does not finish the missile turret on time, but the main base, yes, he does finish it. Okay, picks out the two SCV, the second SCV now gets picked off. I'd like to see the natural of uh, JYJ. I want to see how many missile turrets are there. Yeah, I see there are oh, two. This is oh, I thought that was a good angle for Jop Nudot to attack right there, but instead he's gonna go for the SCV line. That's a turret that got killed. Ooh, or a sudden one. SCV and a turret dies, and now actually JYJ would be funneled up the ramp again. So the Jop Nudot's in the sweet spot right now. This is gonna do so much damage. And JYJ's decided that, hey, he can't do anything about it, so he just moves out, tries to put on some counter pressure. He's out of vision right now, so Jop Nudot's gotta respect it. Oh, actually, a Ling came back to spot that the Marines did not move out. So, actually, this is just a phenomenal position right now for Jop Nuda. He's dealt so much damage. Well, this is kind of putting into a bad situation for JYJ because, I mean, he does know there's a third expansion. Three gas already mining for Jop Nuda. This couple of Amira here to pick up some... Marine, but does not pick up. But single marine was trying to go for the 11, 1 o'clock expansion. But oh, what? Oh, Mira died. <laughs> the Mira did die, and actually, Japni does not getting the trades that he was really wanting in the center of the map. Remember, those marines are already heavily upgraded. He should have plus one. He should already have range and stem done. So they are dangerous, and these mutas have not kept them out or kept them back from moving across the map. The natural has no sunkens, he scans it too. And if this group of units can get synced up with the first group of units across the map, Jopnuda is in trouble because all he has is 10 mutas. I mean, uh, the number of a muta count is not too high. I mean, he needs to eat up this marine medic really, really fast in order to defend his third expansion too. I mean, there's a handful size of the army also going towards the one o'clock expansion. He does see it with the overlord, 
but now he needs to decide. If he defends his 1 o'clock expansion, he won't be able to defend the natural expansion. There's no sunken quality whatsoever. And now he needs to make a decision making, and those marine are going to be steaming inside of the, uh, to the natural. Drones are getting assassinated. Oh, this is heartbreaking. Jopnudok couldn't make a decision whether to save his nat or his third base, and in response, he loses all his drones at his natural, and he's also going to lose his hatch at top right. I mean, he may be able to save the drones at top right and transfer them to bottom or to his natural, but the damage has been done. Terran is in a phenomenal position now. It's one base Zerg, essentially, versus just Mutas, and they have plus one weapon instead of armor, so this Valkyrie switch is going to be amazing. Uh, JYG is just pretty much scanning off to read off what exactly Chamnida is doing. So as you mentioned, Armory, that is going to be the Valkyrie build, which, which is a very good counter uh, counter against it. And uh, Mira Micro, he's trying his best, but it's not working out so well. Yeah, and keep in mind, there's still a big army of Marine Medic on the other side of the map. So Chamnida, he's trying to get a killing blow with these Mutas doesn't get one doesn't even kill that much and he's now got to turn around and otherwise he's going to lose his natural it looks like he's just going to give it up and try and base trade but that's not going to work out there's so many marines and medics here uh, it's four no. he runs into the main yeah those marines are just going to be running inside of the main base and now this is going to be a painful moment for Jamnida. he is pretty much uh <laughs> licking his lips because he knows he lost this game so he taps out gg's called JYJ survives. The power of the ASO jacket is proven, uh, <laughs> proven to us. Unfortunately for Chapney, that it, it is his first time made it into ASO. He does not have much of experience compared to the other X Pro. So, uh, nice try. He did show some nice performance in the very first game of uh, against Soki of his ZVZ potential. Very amazing, but still lacking in the Zerg versus Terra matchup. JYJ played such a solid game there. Yeah, I really did like Chapnida's build, though. Going for the third hatch after scouting the main of JYJ and seeing exactly what's going on. And then also getting so many Marine kills and SCV kills at the natural and hovering around that ramp, preventing the Marines from, uh, you know, really doing any damage. I, I thought it was really good execution, but once the Marines got out, it kind of fell apart. And I'm sure Chapnida realizes that and he'll be working on that and make sure that doesn't uh, happen next time. But unfortunately for him, his ASL is run is done, but this does set us up for a rematch of JYJ versus Sock. Yeah, that is going to be another TVT, and I have to take a look of that. Uh, the cameraman will be uh, probably after after the commercial break. The cameraman will be showing JYJ and Sock. And I'm gonna be taking a look at the ASL jacket. Who's actually wearing it? Who's not wearing it? Yeah, that's the difference maker, man. We'll be back in a second.
All right, the final game of the day is upon us, and we have Sylphid Ban with a Nemesis Ban, and that means that we finally get to see Vermeer. I don't think we've seen Vermeer except for maybe once, so this should be a nice switch up. Well, interesting to see uh, uh, the Nemesis got the, the the map Nemesis got banned from uh, was it Sock? Yeah, Sock decided to ban uh, Nemesis. I mean, I I wanted to see some PVT on Nemesis because there's lots of uh, interesting those a simulator that you can destroy and pretty much uh, not letting the opponent to come into that expansion like a 12 o'clock 3 or 6 or even 9 o'clock but i guess that uh, they don't want to have i guess suck does not want to play something like a messy game he wants to play something uh standard and i guess the vermeer is the map for them oh suck is taking off the aso jacket uh, why are you taking off the aso jacket he's doomed man we can already call it right now. JYJ is going to get his revenge here because he's got the power of the jacket flowing through him. And it's we've seen it so far every single time. Person with the jacket has won. So JYJ, he's feeling it, man. Let's get into our final game of the day. It is JYJ versus Sock on Vermeer. Hear the cheers in the back and in the top right it is JYJ. Meanwhile, in the top left, it is Sock So Vermeer, a standard map. I would say once the ladder finally gets reset, we're probably gonna see this map replace Polypoid. It's a it's a very good map, lots of bases, very standard. And we are seeing who is actually having more eco uh, eco leader in early stage of the game, and we see JYJ is the one. And there's lots of girls right here. <laughs> I don't know who she is because uh, there's lots of people who are wearing masks, but I don't know who that was. But pretty much we're rooting for JYJ there. I like that girl on the right. You know, a lot of fans I, I realize watching StarCraft streams, they like hide from the stream. They don't want to sh show, her, show their faces, but she's looking directly at the camera, pointing at the sign. And she's into it, man. So. She's hyped for her player here. We do have no eight raxes from either side, just standard opener. Now remember on Butter, JYJ went for this interesting 15 gas, but I think that was just kind of because of the weird scouting that went on. And Sokka's gonna go for another forward rax again and JYJ too. It's so inter it's very interesting to see how JYJ has such a economic lead in the early series of the game all the time. Okay, there there's a Forward racks from Sock as well. And look at the mineral differences. I mean, JYJ is going to be putting down the refining much uh, faster than Sock. That mineral boosting, man. Like, ever since you started pointing out the mineral boosting, I've focused really hard on that. And, you know, on some maps like Polypoid Top Right, and I think even Vermeer here, you can double mineral boost the top patch and the one directly below it. Not the one, or the, the, I guess technically the third patch. Uh, and it's coming into play here because it's allowed JYJ to have maybe three second advantage on his factory timing coming up in just a second. Yeah, Barracks is going to be finished for JYJ and let's see the di uh, direction of the scouting pattern. Okay, JYJ will go for the counterclockwise. Will he be able to see Barracks? Probably not. And there's a random SCP just shown. Oh, I guess he yeah. is not going to be checking the, for the Barracks. Yeah, it is kind of weird to see it come from that angle. So he should know that, hey, there's a barracks somewhere. He misses it. What? He misses it. And actually, he's not going to scout top left. He's going to go bottom left. There's a big miss scout from JYJ. That is not a good uh, feeling for JYJ. But he's going to be lifting up his barracks. And the second Marine will go all the way. Oh, wait, what? He's going to go for the 5 o'clock. Oh, he's checking the 12 o'clock as well for some reason. Oh, he saw he saw the Marine. He saw the Marines move out, but did he? It looks like he didn't. And this is a lifted barracks. And these two Marines of JYJ, 
could potentially deal a lot of damage. Instead, he's going to put down a bunker, and that's going to be really annoying. A yeah, bunker is being placed, and I heard the SCV. I heard something get got killed. Well, that must be the SCV was getting ki killed, and now JYJ is in a big time trouble here. The bunker will finish. And he's trying to place down the bunker at Sox Natural as well, but I mean the factory is was done a long time ago. I think the vulture will be popping out soon if the bunker does not finish on time. Or even if it finishes. Oh no, Sock. I mean JYJ is gonna be having a big time trouble here. Okay, two Marines and one single SCV. Somehow we'll be hiding at the bottom side. Yeah. Oh, that's a sneaky move. He's, he sneaks two Marines and an SCV, but a second Vulture comes out, and it's going to shut down this counterattack. I think wow. this is a smart move. All those uh, JYG's decision-making is just not working out so well for uh, for JYG here, and now we can see Sock is catching up with the expansion and the second factory this start as well. And now Sock will be confirming whether JYJ has the second factory or even starport. Okay, I guess he's just gonna be going inside of the main base. The siege tank is now okay. Now siege tank just now came out, but the vulture does get picked off. SCV gets picked off. Everything is just falling apart for JYJ. JYJ is just getting supply. Uh, the supply count went down to 25 here, and this is just completely not looking great. Yeah, this is just a huge advantage for Sock. I was really, you know, I, I didn't like JYJ's position, of course, but I wanted to see how he would deal with this bunker, because when this happens to me on ladder, if I pull off of gas, I feel like it's almost helpless. Like, I just have no answer Ooh. to how you're actually supposed to deal with the bunker. Look Ooh, at the control look at that. on that. <laughs> oh, it's just trolling very hard with the, the one, one hit away of killing the... One, one hit away of getting that SCV. And we just heard the spider mines being placed, so now that's the sign for JYJ needs to be careful! That sea tank is targeting on the bunker. Oh my gosh, that's, that could have been a catastrophe if he's focused on the bunker while a mine connects. It probably would have ended oh! oh, he's gonna run into two of them! Oh, luckily he doesn't take the first hit. I thought that was definitely gonna be two dead tanks, but he ends up saving both of them. And look at that, two factory into a starport follow up and he's also getting the control tower. I have a feeling this is going to be the cloak wraith, but oh, okay. Yeah, that is going to be the cloak wraith and now JYJ trying to avoid all those spider mines like uh, he's just trying to do some uh, guessing game here. He will be rotating those two seas tank and he, JYJ wants to land that barracks but can't really land it. Yeah, and this is a dangerous move from JYJ to just knowingly move out with two tanks when you know mines are out on the field. Like, this could have already been two dead tanks. Somehow he gets them across the map. I still don't really like... Okay, here we go. Now that five Vulture is going to sync up with him, I like it a little bit more. I mean, these are two tanks with no support right now. Oh! <laughs> Yep, this, this is exactly what I'm talking about. You can't just move across two tanks like this into mines. He loses one instantly. I don't even know if he has siege mode, so I'm not sure what he's really planning to do with this. But we also see one Wraith is about to come out in a second. I think JYJ wanted to avoid all those spider mines and go for the uh, go for the harassment with the two siege tank and with the vulture war. But Sock is just on point. I mean, he does have those spider mines map control and one of the C tank got killed for JYJ. So now, I mean, there's two factory into starport follow up that uh, Sock did. What can JYJ do? I mean, does he have armory? Yeah, he's got armory at top right of his base just completed. So there's going to be a few seconds before the Goliath comes out. The Wraith may be able to rack up one or two kills, but... Somehow JYJ is, I gotta say, brought it back. I mean, he's not outright dead. He's managed the supply well at 71 to 61. I mean, this is an okay position for him, but he's definitely down tech right now. He has two fact versus two fact, but Sock has starboard advantage. Yeah, we hear a couple of skins go off, and now Wraith needs to uh, evacuate, and just got a couple of hits. 
he is uh, the suck is about to kill the barracks and this is the type of player that suck really really likes to play I mean he likes to play vulture tank into wraith build and now I think suck is about to have five factory maximum yeah, we see at least four facts being built for Sock. He had three of them already done. He's got a lot of tanks, so he's going to start moving out. He's also had scanners for a while, so he's got energy. And this is, I think, five tanks with like 10 vultures or so. So this is a lot of firepower. Meanwhile, JYJ, he's scrambling. I mean, the majority of his army is almost pure vulture. It's just three tanks for him, about eight vultures. Oh, mine almost connects for JYJ, but doesn't actually end up connecting. Yeah, now he's just taking away that high ground. Sock will be sieging on the top of the top of the high ground, and now he's making the cloak raid for factory for Sock. I don't see the third command center st uh, being started for both players yet. But there's uh, another vulture war. That one single siege tank did hit on the vulture. And that is going to help Sock to win the vulture war. Yeah, and high ground is going to be so difficult for JYJ to break it. Also prevents really JYJ from taking top middle while also defending the third base of Socket top left. So this is a fantastic position for him. And already, just like on the Butter game, Sock is slowly getting map control. And we can see Sock has a uh, total four factory total four factory with the starport still making the cloak raid. I would like to, okay, that is a very aggressive play from Sock here. He's pushing forward, he's drawing the siege tank line all the way at the front line. Okay. Now he's trying to uh, calculate the siege tank range and pick up the Goliath and pick up the siege tank one by one. And JYJ is in big time trouble. I mean, he needs to pull back off his siege tank. And now, okay, that Spider Man did trigger, but most of the blue tanks are turned into red HP. Now that will help for JYJ to survive. Wow, that was a really ambitious move right there from Sock, and he gets punished instantly loses all of his tanks and now all of a sudden jyj has a bit of wiggle room not only does he stop the attack he's also able to clean up the tanks and he can set up on the high ground too but cloaked race coming in pick off the only goliath it's just four race though but they dish out a decent amount of damage another goliath comes in but he needs to repair that otherwise the four race will take it out second goliath comes to save the oh. day he missed he missed target on the Goliath. I guess he was not sure of the uh, HP of the Goliath. I guess he will be just backing up. And now Sock is bringing all of his uh, reinforcement to take this high ground once again. Yep, he's gonna reposition on that high ground. The race forced JYJ back a little bit, but both players have kind of stabilized. Supply still in favor of Sock, about 13 supply ahead but both players do have their third base. We see six factory coming in for Sock. I didn't notice a science facility for him though. So I don't know where our upgrade stands. You can see plus zero or plus one still hasn't kicked in for Sock just yet. And I don't think for JYJ yet either. So that's a very interesting uh, part we are seeing. These vultures are constantly going for the harassment here. One SCB, a couple more SCB will fall, but at the same time we can see uh, he's, I guess there's not much of action will be going on. I mean, whenever you're doing the vulture harassment, you kind of want to bring your reinforcement and try to, uh, draw the, uh, the vultures are drawing the attention to the different, different location. And now he's going to be, oh, okay. Soaking up the oh. spider mine. That's a big hit. Yeah. I mean, mines can change the game easily if there was a big follow-up attack right there and half of your tanks are already softened up i mean it could swing in jyj's favor we know jyj wasn't following up with an attack but sock doesn't need to be a little more careful with his moves of those tanks we see jyj has stabilized the right side and he's gonna try and take a fourth base and he's actually gonna have a fourth base faster than sock right now oh never mind it got taken out by a vulture at mid right well, we're taking a look at here which player is going to be taking the expansion much faster and there's a Not sure whether that's a Wraith or okay. That's a dropship. Okay. That's a dropship was about to go for the vulture drop, but 
two Golats were sitting, he won't be going for the attack. And now Saki's getting the night of taking the fourth expansion here at the nine o'clock at the world. Goliath is diving in. Missile turret does not finish, but okay, there's another missile turret inside, like a TVP. So picks up the dropship nicely, but four vultures are unloaded. Uh, Sak wants to uh, send that vulture and denies that science facility as much as possible. Plus one did not finish for JYJ yet. That's an anno annoying pick off onto the science facility, delaying the plus two, or at least for a few seconds. We do see still constant rate from Sock. He's got seven right now. And anytime JYJ has isolated tanks without Goliath support, I mean, those tanks will be able to be taken down and picked off quite a damn that is a ton of tanks from Sock. I was not expecting this tank count combined with this amount of race. And here we go. This is a big attack. Not a lot of tanks set up for JYJ just yet. Yeah, those tanks will get cleared up and even the missile turret and now this is going to uh, have a big time trouble for JYJ once again because he needs to bring back all of his siege tank from the bottom right side and defend that pressure from Sock. And okay, there's a single vulture was denying that uh, fourth base as much as possible. Okay, laying the spider mine at the seven o'clock main base. That's definitely nice, but we are seeing Sock is taking multiple bases. I mean, he's taking another uh, bottom left side taking the fifth expansion and those siege tanks are also moving forward calculating the siege tank range and picking up the vulture picking up the siege tank one by one and both of the players have plus one attack but we know Sock had the uh, science facility slightly faster than JYJ so that's a sign for uh, Sock that he will be having plus two much much faster than JYJ here I, I was wondering where the supply of JYJ was because it was basically even, but the tank count looks so small. I see that now that the tanks were on the bottom side, and that does keep Sock from pushing into the natural, but uh, he has really, really put the pressure onto JYJ. Vulture denies the fourth base again. Sock's taking his fifth base at bottom left, but JYJ somehow. Still, even in supply, 149 to 142, we we'll see another mine connection, this time around getting another tank. Yeah, those blue tanks at the JYJ Snatcher is just so much of a pressure for him. I mean, okay, yeah, Suck is bringing all those uh, C's tanks once again. I guess he wants to go for the frontal attack, maybe? I'm not sure about this. Yeah, I, oh my gosh. Okay, this is it. This is going to be the big attack oh, from Sock right now. He, he needs to lead with his with his vultures, though. This is a lot of tanks from JYJ, but as you say, the plus two is kicked in with two shot tanks. But the arc is amazing for JYJ. None of the tanks have fallen just yet. This is great hold from him. Look well, at the Valkyries. Well, <laughs> yeah, the Valkyrie count is definitely high, so Sock is not going to be... Sock needs to be very careful with his uh, Wraith movement. There's a couple of raids at 12 o'clock, but that's a definitely a nice hold for JYJ. I mean, remember JYJ was such a having a disadvantage dis side on the early stage of the game, but now he's slightly making some comeback. But we are seeing more factory being added for Sock. We see that's only five factory from JYJ. Yeah, JYJ spending a lot of his money onto those walkers, and they're super expensive. Even though that attack didn't look that successful for Sock, he is like an inch from being in range of preventing all rallied and reinforcements from JYJ. So if he can close the gap even just a tiny amount, all of a sudden JYJ will not be able to get any units out of the map. Now, the race are sharking around trying to find an opening. We know that there's a lot of Valkyries right there. Can Does he know though? He's flying in, he oh. does! Get spotted by a turret! He's to be careful, no scans going off. He picks up one Valkyrie, two Valkyries! He's gonna get all the Valkyries, but he will lose all, almost all of his race. And most of the race did fall, and there are total five facts still for JYJ. Okay, Dropship will fall. That was a that was a, a good trade for Sock. I think he trades five Wraith for four Valkyries. Obviously, value-wise, it's definitely worth. But uh, it also allows him vision with his tanks. But instead, JYJ is gonna say no, sir. He's gonna push back this tank line a little bit. Yeah, that's lots of Vultures. These things are moving, coming across the map here, and that's a very interesting uh, fifth base that JYJ took at the bottom right side, and we are seeing. 
That's the six base that Sock is taking at the bottom left. And the map is going to be into the split map scenario, but whenever you fall, you go into the split map scenario, you want to defend uh you want to defend your five o'clock base but this five o'clock base will get destroyed vultures and spider mines and sea tanks are going to be slowly drawing a line all the way to the right side and this is not good go lights fall no oh, and sock got into the spot he needed all he needed was to get into a position where units can't defend bottom right by just moving across the map and he has gotten there so that means bottom right is cut off the fourth base is still up and running for JYJ, but he has no way to access the bottom right side of the map anymore. Tanks are getting picked off by Rage. Remember, all the Valkyries are dead, so there should be no answer to this. It's three dropships moving out, but that's not like a, a big doom drop. So I'm not sure if this is actually going to be successful. And remember, he's going to be careful. I mean, there are Wraiths here, man. Yeah, oh, no, he's going to load on mines. Both of the players uh, loses the... Giant amount of uh, army now. Those vultures are here once again, but now three o'clock expansion is vulnerable. Raids are picking off the siege tank at three o'clock side, and JYJ. You can see from the mini map that uh two siege tank or three or two or three siege tanks are still picking up the reinforcement there at the one o'clock side, and now those number of siege tank all oh, spider mines does connect. Dude, he's just so <gasps> oh my. Good. Sock is just so good TVT man. I mean these vultures are soaking up so many hits and allowing the tanks to get into position and we may see the GG in just a second. There's oh. no way to counter these tanks. They're overlooking the fourth base now. Sock has almost the entire left side of the map. He's up 40 supply and this is actually going to be the first time the jacket falls. Scan. Wow. And look at how fast he's... Look at how fast uh, he can just uh, change his uh, unit comp. Like I mean, he was constantly playing this vulture, vulture tank, vulture tank wraith, and now he got all of a sudden he has five dropship. When the hell yeah. did he make five dropship? I have no idea. And, and he's on top of the army. Like he's just instantly on top of the army. His movement is so fast, and there it is, GG. And that means sock. He's gonna eliminate JYJ. And he's gonna move into the next round. <laughs> yeah, Sock is getting all beaten up by the JSA members rooting for him, <laughs> having the excite moment there. And Sock is very happy that he actually survived in this round of twenty-four. So that is going to be, uh, Sock is the uh, second player who will be advancing into the round of sixteen, and he should be going into the interview soon. You know, I had a feeling that Sock was going to do well today because his TVT is just so good. And I feel like luck was on his side to get JYJ twice. Uh, I mean, you could just see it. I mean, it's just so good, dude. Like, I wish I could play like that because I play Tank Wraith also. Not like that, obviously. But I wish I could play like that, man. Yeah, that, um... The unit movement, how Sok was doing, is just absolutely peace. Okay, looks like the caster is here. That was the last game of the ASL Season 14 Round of 24 Group D. The second player will be advancing into Round of 16. That uh, he will be Sok. Congratulations. So Sok, he has been getting eliminated all the time in the Round of 24 in the previous season. Season 11, Season 12, and Season 13, but now we are finally made it into Round of 15. How do you feel? So he, he didn't expect that it's gonna be a. He didn't expect it was. He didn't expect. He didn't make it into Round of 16 for a long time. Uh, the caster mentioned he didn't make it into Round of 16 for. Uh, more than four or five years and everyone was surprised how fast you were in TVT how fast you were drawing the siege tank line and pressuring the opponent 
And how did you prepare all this round of 24? So, Sock is saying that he kind of expected that uh, Soki would be playing something like an all in play in that winner's match. He was somewhat angry when he lost to the all in build. So there's a one moment that your race, your race uh, picked off JYJ's Valkyrie. Normally whenever, when, normally whenever you see the Valkyrie, you can't be really using the raid. You can't, you can't really use the rate, but uh, you showed how strong uh, your unit movement or decision making was very interesting. And Sok is saying of his... Uh, Sok is pretty much uh, answering to the question that uh, he is very confident with the Vulture tank rate playstyle in PvT and compared to the other players. Not, there's not much of a player who can actually copy his playstyle and it just things are just worked out so well for him in a decider match and how do you feel when your members the JSM members are rooting for your game and the feeling the atmosphere of this uh, offline studio much different than the previous season don't you think so and Sock says he felt like he won the tournament uh, he won the tournament out of the uh, final stage and because all the members were coming out and pretty much like beating him up or like hitting his head with the flower and his uh, hugging, from the, uh, hugging from the back so he felt really great uh, any last word and Sox says his main goal was to make it into round of 16 and he accomplished his uh, goal so he wants to climb up higher in this season any last word to your fans and Sox says he knows he knows JSM members don't uh, they don't really often come to this offline studio to root for the players but he's kind of glad that they're all here the JSA chairman, JSA the leader of the NARA they're all here and rooting for his game so he's very happy he's very glad to see them again he feels, he feels really great and thank you for the interview and we'll see you again in the group nomination yeah, well, congratulations to Sock. As you stated, this is like his first time into the round of 16. You know, I was thinking the same thing. As soon as he won, I instantly loaded up his Liquipedia to see if he had actually made it past the round of 2024, 20, and it seems like the answer is no. We are getting a rundown of how the games went today. You can see Sulky taking down Jopnuda in a wild ZBZ, Sock taking down JYJ, then Sulky beating out Sock. Then Sock taking down Jopni Dot, and then finally Sock getting a revenge on JYJ. And that means we have almost even race distribution. We've got four Terrans, three Protoss, and five Zergs. But I know the remaining two groups have a lot of Protoss in them, and they can definitely start to even out the racial balance. There we go. There's Snow right there, and he's going to be facing off versus Aya tomorrow. And then we've got Shine versus Jadon in match two. Wow, that's another ZBZ we are going to be taking a look at, tom uh, at tomorrow's game. And uh, when was the last time he uh, made it into ASL stage? I mean, I haven't seen him for a while. I mean, it's glad to see him again in this uh, season 14. And I guess he decided to change his name into Inga. Inga is a, it's a type of like, I think it's a fish like uh, from Pokemon uh, Magikarp. Yeah, Magikarp is definitely a Pokemon. Yeah, so uh, people are pretty much gave him uh, a lot of uh, people gave him a nickname, like calling him Magikarp in Korean. So that's how that's what uh, the name word was came from. If you guys are interested, uh, somewhat curious about the name, and yeah, I guess the casters are gonna be wrapping up soon here. So what do you think of this uh, to today's uh, game? Well, I. Th I thought that the TVT games were really good, not just because I'm a Terran player, but the movement was really great. 
the first game I gotta say surprised me because I thought Sulky had it in the bag, and then he kind of let it slip away. But I think the most exciting game for me was the short one on Arkanoid, simply because any Terran now that faces Zerg on there is going to have to be very careful because you can see one hatch lair. I mean, that's a real threat, and you can't scout it. Like, that's the problem. You can't scout it. Yeah, one hatch lair build is just... It's just very powerful. I mean, Zergling strikes really, really fast, and you can also have to defend either the Mira combo or the Lurker all-in combo, and just so much of a... Uh, possibility that Terra needs to defend from. I mean, Missile Turret is definitely great against Muta, but if you invest so much of a mineral on a, uh, eBay and a Missile Turret, then you cannot defend the Zergling Lurker all in. And just too much about thinking there. Yeah, and what's funny is I think that Sock played probably the best build that you're going to have versus it, because he ended up going one Rack's Command Center into two Rack's and then it still just didn't matter. So, unless you're playing like a one base build, like, is there just no counter to it? I, I, I don't, honestly don't know. But if you play a one base build, then all of a sudden, if Zerg's on two or three bases instantly, I mean, you're in big time trouble. So, I'm curious to see how many more bans we're going to have on Arkanoid uh, and how Terrans will respond in the future if we actually have some more TVCs. But what about Group D tomorrow? We've got Snow versus Haya first. You actually think Haya can take down Snow? I mean, Snow's just such, such a monster, Protoss vs. Terran. Group E, uh, I did play against Snow in the ASO qualifier on day one. I did lose against him 2-1, uh, to one, but Snow is just an annoying Protoss player who just uses uh, Reaver all day long until the game is finished. Okay, looks like Korean Caster is done wrapping it up. Yep, that's it for us today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back tomorrow with Group E, Snow versus Haya and Jadong versus Shine. That group should be very exciting.